Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian. I'm Zach. I'm Jeff. And we are going to talk about some board games. And stuff. Pretty much the usual. <laughs> uh, and stuff, mostly stuff. Mostly, mostly, mostly stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can I, I can hear you guys better. This That's week. good. You, Jeff you, got you, some fancy new headphones yeah. for recording. I got Sennheisers. Oh yeah. If that's how it's pronounced. Yeah. It's probably German. Close enough. Uh, we, we also actually got a headphone amp, so we're not doing a daisy chain of splitters that's anymore. True. We're getting downright professional here, guys. I mean, if we get much more equipment, we might actually, you know. Sound then it's like, only our fault it, that it, we're not <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> Uh, f- slowly adding legitimacy yeah. to it. I want to get a nice picture of you for the uh, Instagram, oh. which will be in our show notes. No. <laughs> yes. Zach yeah. is embracing the show notes. So Smile. While Zach takes this photo, the speaking of show there notes, I do forget to plug it, but I do put a little bit of effort into the show notes. I include links to all the Kickstarters we talk about, any particular gaming news I try to link to, and uh, along with really detailed timestamps. Hey, and I write that, that thing before and, all and that. And Zach <laughs> writes an intro when he remembers. Otherwise, I do it at like 3 a.m. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just the second before you hit publish. Pretty much. Like, yeah. oh, God, what do I do? But, I've been drinking um, all day. <laughs> but no, so uh, we put a little bit of effort into it. So if you're ever over on our website, you can check those show notes out. The website will be getting a major improvement this winter. But it's not bad. It's well, not like I mean, it's in between snowboarding. Website. Yes. Yeah. Well, mostly I just while he's throwing. jumping, he'll do it. <laughs> he's got his computer attached to his chest. <laughs> fucking flipping in the air. No, I, I hope you also have your GoPro attached to it too, because I've seen some of those, <laughs> and those are great. Yeah, <laughs> my go- all of my good GoPro footage of, is of me eating shit in the snow. Yep, <laughs> usually doing nothing other than going straight and then just falling. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yeah. like good times. Good times. Um, this banter is going great. It is going fantastic. <laughs> Football started. Football did start. Oh my gosh, I'm actually surprised I didn't talk about it at all last week because, well, no, because last week's was Caverna. Well, well, it was, but it was well, before yeah, it was the... F- no. No, because we it was Thursday night was the game, and then we did a recording on Monday, and I didn't mention football yeah, We need to get a better, better handle of time. <laughs> we do need to get a better handle of time. No, but uh, as a very avid Broncos fan, this is always my ta- favorite time of year. Yeah. Well, football I don't really season. care about football that much. So. I like, that, that's actually why I don't talk about it. I like going over to people's houses, watch football, and drink. Yeah, no, and, well, but yeah. I don't really care about the football. Yeah. I go, yeah, that's that's what I did this weekend. Everything was. I know <laughs> about football, I learned by just going over to friends' yeah. houses. I had and to, eating. Yeah, I had to drag <laughs> myself out of the house so I just would not, so I could actually stop playing WoW for a bit. So that's why I accepted your invite. <laughs> Game's addictive. Yeah. 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 So my game day yesterday involved no board games. I actually went to the Broncos game, which Twitter followers would know because I posted Twitter pictures Ugh. from the stadium. Ugh. What, when um, did you go to the game? Yesterday yeah. afternoon. I was at the, it was a 2.30 oh, game. So I, was I didn't know you were at the game. Yeah, I was at the game from 2.30 to 6. And then oh. I came home, invited everybody over, and started making pizzas. Gotcha. From scratch. Because I do I mean, the crust like from that. scratch. Pretty you, sure that the sauce was from a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I delivered... I delivered the yeast. Ooh, fancy. Yes. yes, yes. Jeff delivered the yeast yesterday, and it wasn't nearly as gross as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeast. <laughs> we, uh, I did get to play a few board games, though. I learned Le Havre on Friday, which I was super stoked to have finally gotten to play that. It's a great game. How long was it? It was about three and a half hours. That, for how many people? Three. That's a long That is. Game. How much of that was learning? Uh, a significant amount of it, but okay. there is a, so it was compounded by the fact neither Megan and I had ever played. So there were two new players and then Paul who was teaching us hadn't played in quite some time. So there was a fair amount of rules referencing throughout and then just reading cards to see what they mean and stuff like it'll, it's definitely one that would speed up with multiple plays. That's how like com- significantly, I think got uh, quite a bit. Yes. If it was, as long as there's not a new person who's always going to be reading, but it is a game kind of like other Uwe Rosenberg games where there's a lot of options. So there is a fair chance for AP. So if you're playing with somebody who, who regularly has analysis paralysis, it could <clears throat> regularly be a long game. Sounded but. like our, caverna game yeah where i was the only one that had played and it had been a while yeah i mean but that was less than three hours for us for four players yeah i, I will say that the length is the only turnoff for me for that game i absolutely fucking loved lahar i want to say it's pretty well received yeah, yeah. out there so i i don't 
fully get why people are like, oh, it replaced Agricola for me or whatever, because I think they're different enough games. Playing Laharve is definitely not going to make me not want to play Agricola, but holy crap, I love Laharve. Like, it's a really good game. And you own it. And I own it. I've How had long it have like, you had you owned it before you played it? Well over a year. Mm. That's like my uh, Through the Ages. Yeah. That's, Second edition? Oh, uh, is it a new story? Uh, it's not the new new one. Then that's not this. Oh, then that is the second edition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I have opened it once, and that's about it. It sounds, it sounds it, like so. my uh, K- the Kemet too. Yeah, I had that one. I feel like going on three years now. Wow, oh, wow. maybe two and a half. I, you know, Dominant Species is probably about that length. Yeah. of time. For I will me play too. Dominant Species almost any fucking time. Okay. I mention it every time we're thinking about playing games, and Zach always says no, <laughs> despite the fact that it's his game. It, we, yeah, I it own is. it now, so now you have another person. Yeah, that, I mean, so we ooh, just, a non-ripped board. That sounds interesting. <laughs> we can just uh, <laughs> not invite Zach, so he can't say no. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm down with excluding Zach from game days. <sighs> that hurts. <laughs> No, uh, I, 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 it's gotten to the point where now that I know there's another board gaming podcast in town, and not only that, but they focus on heavier games. Uh-huh. I've really been tempted to reach out to the heavier, the heavy cardboard guys and gal, and be like, "Hey, you know, People. I want to, I want to play some heavy. Car- I want to, ha- I want to pl- play heavy games with you guys, please, because I don't get to please. do it nearly as often with my regular group as I would like. Well, like heavy, heavy games. This is your own fault. Coin games, dominant species games. This will be your own fault because you'll be snowboarding every week. That's true. Year. During the winter, entirely true. Well, no, because I'll play games with... Well, if I had people at the condo who wanted to play heavy yeah. games, we snowboard till no. four, and then we don't do anything from four to midnight but hang out and watch Netflix and drink. I would gladly fill that with heavy gaming if I had people in the condo who would if, play Well, if I games. had an extra two grand to hang out on a mountain for <laughs> four months. It's all about what you make a priority in life. Absolutely. Yeah, do you care about food? I like if not... <laughs> Just, I eat a lot of ramen during the winter. <laughs> <laughs> and during the winter... Since I'm in a condo with Ant, and Ant Drink gets a, a substantial amount of beer for free, I, you know, it, it subsidizes my drinking costs. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Subsidization. <laughs> Subsidization is yeah. not a word. It is um, not. Jeff, you been playing anything recently? Not really. Uh, game night was the big game of the week. Yeah. But, uh, but it was Caverna, and then I've been busy with work. Gotcha. World of Warcraft. Guild yeah. Wars, a lot of Guild Wars too. Oh. Got back into that. I used to play Guild Wars. I did for too. like I don't know a couple days because it was a it was a free one. So I was like, oh, I'll try it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it was. I mean, it's oh. a game where you can buy it. You like, there's no subscription. Yeah. But that's in a while, you can actually pay, you you can just pay gold for your subscription now. Yes. So. Uh, but to be able to even get those available to buy, someone has to buy that for twenty dollars. Well, yeah. But then you can trade it for twenty air quotes dollars worth of gold depending on exactly the, yeah, well, i mean that's basically what eve did for a long mm-hmm. time like, yeah it's just that same sort of thing isk isk yep. yeah have we ever figured out what isk stands for international, international space currency <laughs> or international standard currency was my guess okay but I don't, like, I don't know it's I'm in space because coup and grif- cool. grifters all use isk ISK. yeah so other games that aren't necessarily in space use i don't ISK. care space listeners if you know <laughs> what isk stands for <laughs> Please let us know, because I googled yeah. and I couldn't find anything except we. You know, the we could Eve actually one. probably just message the creator on what does uh, this Twitter. Mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why is isk? But I don't care enough to. do I don't either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do care enough to read a listener email about it, though. Yes, indeed. Yeah, well, which we don't have. We don't have no. no. <laughs> don't don't give up our hopes for that. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Zach? Have you played anything else? Interesting? Uh, I played Stockpile again. I did not win. I actually got second, and I thought I was going to get last. Well, that's so, good. So, yeah. I've only seen that played. I've yep. got to play it. I've got it right over there. It's literally right like, there. Fuck it's this podcast. Line we can play. <laughs> Dude, Let's I, play in the middle of the podcast. After the day I had, uh-huh. that's so very tempting. <laughs> <laughs> this feels like work right now. I just want to play games and zone out. <laughs> Me uh, too. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Yeah, I didn't win, but I had a, I had a good time with that. Um, fucking cosmic computers of that just could not... Could not catch a break. It just kept bankrupting over and over again. It was hilarious. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yep. But Stacks in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. And then I played some uh, Race for the Galaxy, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, one thing I did do was read a lot of rule books. Yeah, you're getting brushed up on Scythe and Including Fury the, of Dracula. The one, the one player edition of it, too, yes. right? Yes. Uh, I want to play the Automa yeah. uh, version 
and then uh, Fury of Dracula came. <laughs> so I was reading the rule book on there. Did God, you I'm open really, that up? I'm really yes. excited to play I have, that game. I have opened Fury of Dracula, you ruining pu- all of its price value now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's kind of a deception game. Yes, uh, but that's about as far as I got. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's a it's a, a hidden movement for one of them. You know, and it's a one v mini. Also, seems interesting. It's got right. a lot of cool like Van Helsing characters. Yes, it and does. Stuff in there. I can understand why like that game's Van real Hits. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and then Forbidden Stars. I've been trying to hunt through that. Did you book. assemble that yet? Uh, there's not any assembling. Well, I mean, like putting the pieces onto the stands. No, I have not. Okay. And I'm so glad they did that because they made the mistake in StarCraft of permanently gluing the little flight stands and then shipping it like that. <laughs> oh, um, man. I I remember when I got my copy long, long ago. Uh, I was able to get replacement parts, and there was like. A big, bold, like, hey, if your copy has any broken stands, go here, because it must have been a huge issue. That's Mm -hmm. good. At least I got replacements. There you go. That is nice. Uh, I just today received in the mail a brand new copy of Risk Legacy, because I'm going to start that up again. Oh, you did buy it? Yeah. Yeah. buying it? Okay. It was a reasonable Mm -hmm. deal on Amazon. Okay. And I know uh, Megan and Brian both really like Risk, and so they wanted to play the used copy that we picked up from our friends, but that one, they, they messed it up, so... Went ahead and just got a new one. How long is one game of Lis- Risk Legacy? 45 minutes to an hour and uh-huh. a half. Uh, yeah, not reg- too bad. Regular Risk can go significantly longer. Yeah, because so it has the, no end mechanic. So this one, okay. it's the first of four points. And there's a variety of different yeah. point things. And technically, when everybody starts the game, they start with two points. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there's some extreme limitations yes. on there. Yep. And the designer of this was... Between Risk Legacy and Pandemic Legacy. Yeah, Rob Davro. Rob Davro. Rob Davro. Mm-hmm. Okay. He came up with the Legacy concept, yes, that, basically. Yeah, the, okay. Mm-hmm. And then he is doing Seafall? Yes. yes. He did. did Seafall. Has done Seafall? <laughs> has done Seafall. Yes. yes. Uh, which we expect any Hopefully, week now. Yeah, well, it's not it's quite October, October yet. It definitely said October it was last delivery. Week of, oh, they put, did they push it back? Right. A little bit, I think. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's doing, there's a couple that he has his toes in, or whatever. Uh, he's waiting in. <laughs> he just uses his feet to create. <laughs> That's what makes him all the more impressive. If, if the yeah. boxes um, stink when you there's open something, them. There's something, it's like, it's called like Chronicle Origins or something that he yeah. had a hand in too. Um, and then that doesn't have exactly a legacy mechanic, but some sort of sustaining thing in its campaign. Gotcha. Uh, and then there's been mention of a werewolf legacy. Once again, mm. no idea how that's going to turn out, but... Yeah. I'll, that could be awesome. I once I will still buy the shit out of that. <laughs> Shred this card permanently. Pretty much, yes. Uh, I the only thing I did was look at board games that I should buy, like Terraforming Mars and Cry Havoc. I had them sitting in. God, I want Terraforming Mars so bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I had them too. sitting in a shopping cart and was like, mm, no. Yeah, I cannot afford I, so any games right now. I just dunked sucks. into all those Games Workshop games. So <laughs> it's like I got to play those first. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that. That won't last long. No, I still got to play <laughs> Seven Sins. I still oh, yeah. got, yeah. Yeah, so. we got a lot of stuff to play. Yeah, yeah, we do. We should stop doing you this podcast stop, thing and stop. just play games. You guys, you guys need to stop having lives, and we can just focus on the podcast and games. So you Less work, were over more here games. When we played one game of Race of the Galaxy, yeah. and you left. Yeah, but that, those weren't any of the games that we just mentioned. We still haven't really played, well, you guys haven't played at all. Black Plague, Zombicide, Black Plague, with I all the once. new stuff. Oh, yeah. With I all played, the new stuff. I, I got all the new them. stuff. Yeah. You should have mentioned that. I've been no, mentioning that. No, I, I, I do not recall. <laughs> Your selective memory is very convenient. Right, it Mr. is. Oh, it's a great... It's <laughs> all right, Mr. President. <laughs> all right. So the one game that we all <laughs> got to play... Last week. Last week that we are going to discuss today because Which we've decided to change our format just a hair bit. So just one single bunny. Just one single bunny. Yep. Where did you say where hair. did bunny come? Oh god <laughs> damn it. Puns. <laughs> Sorry. So we're changing our format a little bit, as you may have already noticed. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna try that was get, wait, that was our established banter. That was our established banter. So banter is now over. Banter is over. <laughs> We're hoping to get all of the train derailing random thoughts out of our head in the first 20 minutes. Good luck with that. Wait until that first 20 minutes stretches to an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, really, it was after the last episode when Jeff was talking about Caverna for his one game that he wanted to kind of talk about. And then we all just were talking about it. And we were like, you know, we should 
just make one game kind of the focus of our review game of the week section thoughts and opinions thoughts and opinions so we're going to try and all three of us play one particular game or two people play a game that the third is really familiar with or something along those lines and then we're going to talk about it which is what we're going to do right now because we all three played multiple games of captain sonar captain sonar at game night and holy shit all I want to do right now is play Captain Sonar. That I'm game surprised you haven't amazing. bought it already. I'm, if I had money, I would. You were a hair's width away from being like, uh, I don't want to play Captain Sonar. It's true. I was so close to yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm I was like, so glad we got I did. One, we got one spot left for Captain Sonar, Adrian. I know you want to play it. And you're like, I'm just way too fucking wasted. <laughs> I was getting well on my way to being <laughs> drunk last Wednesday. Um. So I don't think any did either of you play the turn based version? No, no. thankfully okay. not. <laughs> so did not hear good things about it. Real quick, the game. So yeah, so Zach, you've got a rules breakdown for us here? <laughs> yeah, so it's uh two to eight players. Uh works best with eight because it's uh two teams. It's a sub v sub and it's a fight to the death. Yes. Well, we don't don't know. We the sub blows up, that's what it ends. Yeah. So they you, you could have survivors, you so don't know. What I, as a former submariner who actually served on submarines in sub warfare, when one sub gets sunk by a torpedo from another sub, everybody dies. Everyone's <laughs> dead. <laughs> I just assume that in any game that I'm playing. <laughs> um, Do they teach you that in training? Just so you know, if we, if we fail, we're all dead. <laughs> it's yeah, more or less known. There's, <laughs> there, there's not a lot unless your sub happens to be like very near the surface there's not much that's going to save you you just hold your breath and just float up <laughs> yep the, that, what, a couple hundred feet it's so good yeah, yeah all that, that all couple, that water pressure you know, it's <laughs> real easy to hold your breath you know, and it's pressing 12, down on your chest yeah. 1200 meters <laughs> <laughs> anyway so uh like i said it's two to eight two to eight players and so you have two teams of four different roles so the first you have is the captain. He's the one running the ship. And so you basically have this giant grid in front of you that of has dots. of dots and islands. Uh, and you're basically playing snake. You know, you're just moving around. You have to yell, you know, go north, go east, go uh, south, whatever. And you just can't cross your own. Yep. You can't cross your own line and you can't hit an island, basically. Um, <clears throat> and then you also have the radio yeah, operator. Yeah. And so he, what he is doing is he has the same grid that a captain does. But he is listening to the opponent's captain. So, you know, a minor aside, there's this giant divider in between both teams. And so you don't, you can hear what they're saying, but you can't see their board or anything like that. Yeah. Right. Which so, is super cool. And the is. art on there is awesome. It is. It's, it's like set in near future, like 2040 or something like that. Yeah. And it's like the, <clears throat> the actual submarine graphics yes. and stuff. It's cool. It looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so the radio operator is listening to the other team, and he has this giant, like, clear board that he's tracing the lines and the way you hear it to try and figure out where they are. Because, you know, the different islands and stuff make it to where they can't be in any, you know, they can't be in all places, and you're just trying to listen for them and hearing when they're saying mines and stuff like that. And seeing what their shape could possibly yeah, fit you're, into. you're trying, because you're trying to figure out where they are. Yep. All right. So the next one is the first mate. And XO, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, XO, that also works. Yeah. Names, they're relevant. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Significant differences between a first mate and an executive officer. You know officer. what? Get your experience out of here, okay? <laughs> this is a board gaming podcast. Uh, so the the XO is basically every time the captain says to move, like he has a bunch of different... Five uh, powers. Five powers that you can get to charge up one one slot of. So, Red, so I, yeah, what? Red, green, and yellow. Yes. And so... Like, one of them has three, so every time you move, you get to fill one of the three. And then once it moves up to three, the captain can yell... Or the XO. Or the XO yep. uh, can yell stop and then do whatever its power is. Because this game takes place in real time. Yes. Yep. Uh, so the engineer is... He has this giant uh, giant diagram of the ship that basically... And it has a whole bunch of different circuits and stuff. And every time you move, depending on which... Um, so, like, there's, you know, in different columns, north, south, east, and west. So if you move one north... You have to break something in there. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> you get to charge something and then you have to break something. Yes. And uh, if you ever have to break something and you can't, you take damage. By the way, if you take four damage, you lose. And yeah. everyone dies. Yes. As, as established. As established. <laughs> yeah. So it's a delicate balance. So you have to move. As the captain, you have to move <clears throat> to charge your systems. But as you move, it breaks other systems. Yep. And then 
the more you move, the more information it gives to the opponents about where you might be so that they can try and locate you and attack. Exactly. Um, and and so there are some things that you can break that if you fill certain circuits and stuff like that, it clears them out, right. which is one way to get rid of damage. The other way is to surface. And, yeah. And depending on what direction you move in depends yes. on what areas you can damage. Exactly. So you have to confer with your engineer to be like, hey, what directions do we need to move so we don't explode? <laughs> yeah. uh, and sometimes that's hard because you're playing snake. Yeah, so you can back yeah. yourself into a corner real easy. Exactly. But if you get backed into a corner, like if you truly get backed into a corner where you can't move at all, you can surface, which mm -hmm. in addition to repairing damage, also you get to erase your entire current trail and start over fresh. So yes. then you can recross your path. But in order to do that, everybody has to trace a part of the sub to basically, you're checking over it to make sure it's all good. And the other team has to actually okay that you were inside these lines and stuff like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you want to go as fast as you can because you can't move at all. But you want to make sure it's actually good because the other be like, no, you, you, this part is wrong. And that can be brutal. It can because apparently you're supposed to erase the entire thing. It, and, and they start can over. keep working the entire time. Yes. So they can yep. be moving mm -hmm. and charging up their systems. Yep. They can be conferring like their sonar man with his little clear mm -hmm. sheet that has his diagram where he thinks you are. He can be moving exactly. that around his map. Um, and Yeah. So some of the powers that the XO has. So we got sonar and drones. Those are just used to locate people either in sectors or... They there's have nine to give, sectors. Yeah, there's nine sectors, and you, you, you can give them row, line, or for the... the X, Y, yes, or sector. Sector for the for the sonar, and then they have to tell you a true one and a false one. Yeah. Um, numbers, letters at the top, numbers vertical, mm -hmm. and then... Numbers for the sector, I believe. Yeah. Yep, yeah. And then they also have the torpedoes and mines. So mines, you can just lay out whenever you have it charged, and then you can choose to blow it up whenever. Ideally, it'll be when they're nearby because it does two damage if you hit them directly mm -hmm. and one damage if you hit adjacent to them. So Which it, torpedoes do the same thing. Yes, and those have a four, a four range on them. Which is why conferring with your radio operator is very important. It is. Because yeah. you, like, where the fuck are they? Mm -hmm. Where do I have to shoot? And whenever you hit, it's like it's a goddamn miracle especially, every time. Especially it, oh the man, one or two times so when you hit the direct hit. It's oh, like, it's so great. But so you know, that's basically the rules of it. I mean, there's also a way to there's silence too, which you can just move it to four without them knowing how much you're doing to help lose. And but it's in one direction. You can't zigzag. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it's hard to do. But yeah, so that's basically the rules of the game. And I know that we all played different different, different uh, roles. I played yes. uh, the XO during a turn-based game because mm -hmm. it was like seven, six or seven new people learning the game. So we did a quick turn-based, which is each team does their whole thing, which is move, XO makes a mark, engineer makes a mark, then it's the other turn. The oh, that sounds turn. horrible. And then they move, your radio operator takes it down, and then they do. And then you just kind of go back and forth. If you have to surface, you don't have to do any of the tracing. The other team just gets three free turns. Mm, okay. Um, and then uh, <laughs> basically everyone that had played before that had not done the turn-based was like, this sucks. Yeah. Uh, do not recommend turn-based except maybe two or three turns, turns. just to kind of learn the game. That makes sense. Uh, and then I moved to captain for mm -hmm. two games. Yes, he did. Yes. Yeah, and so I was XO for my first game, and then I switched to the opposing team's captain when he moved. So I was both the XO and the captain. The thing that was tricky for me is, like, as the XO, just whenever the captain would say move, I'd make a mark. So he just, he'd say he's moving, and I'd make a mark, and, and I could go quick. You know, like, basically, every time he said move, I could make, I, I could make marks real quick on a piece yeah. of laminate. When I switched to captain, apparently, I was really fast. I'd be like, you were north, north, east, north, south, west, north. And, you know, like, I had my little board, so I was making sure not to overlap. But my own team was like, dude, wait, slow down. We have yeah. to mark these. You're supposed and then to be the, waiting. Yeah, yes. and, then the, and then the other team. So Zach was the, the I was the, for the I was others. the radio operator for all three, and the first two times I played it was uh, when our Wesley was the captain. Uh, I was able to find him decently well in the first one. The second one, he shot a torpedo, and I was like, I know exactly where the fuck he is. And I was <laughs> like, shoot here, and you shot there, direct hit. It Boom. was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but on that last, that third one, and I think it was because you're going so fast. There were times I was just like, like I, I just couldn't find you because I was like, I had a sheet and I was like, this does not fit anywhere on the board. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> and and while I'm doing that, you're going north, east, 
east and i'm just like but i'm trying to add more lines i'm like it's still not making any sense so at one point i literally just went just erase the entire thing and i was like i'm just gonna start from the start from scratch yeah um the the only reason that one was even a close game i think was that our radio man was having a lot of trouble too like there were a couple of times when he was like here they're here they're here and we'd shoot a torpedo and it's Nothing. Not even. Not even like a near hit. We, but well, a lot we, of times you were close. You were like, yeah. Oh. You just, like, uh, like we were on the, twice. It was on. We were on the other side of the island at that yeah, same spot. Yeah, we were though. like row H, and uh, you shot on. Uh, you shot on K or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then we finally found you guys, and we, I think we we hit you with a mine, and then the fact the mine hit, we knew you were in the perimeter of that. Yeah. And we were like moving it around, like okay, it only fits in that one perimeter spot torpedo direct hit boom yeah it's, it seems like once you once you get a hit on one of them especially if you get a mine and you're near the mine it's it He's, goes pretty quick once you actually finally find them although we yeah. got you guys the three damage and then we lost you yeah we were oh, it sucks. Well, we yeah. barely got i don't i still don't know how we got away once again i think i'm i missed hearing you and so I was so just, it was zach's fault yeah it was my fault <laughs> i'm fine with it like but as like i said uh, a lot of people say that the radio is the most stressful just because you have like you have to be listening to them, and if you miss anything, yeah, that um, like that or the captain or the mo- you yeah, know, the I never f- really read the rules for like what the radio operator can can ask uh-huh. of the other captain, like <clears throat> if he's not being clear enough. Well, so basically, how we did it was, you know, if I didn't hear what he said, but can you repeat that? Yeah, and he said east. It was like okay, I marked east, but if I had just marked him as west, and he goes east, I'm like, wait, you just went west, and then he'd be like, oh, that's because. There was like a north between that or something like yeah. that. Yeah. The other rod radio operator was just asking me a lot what I was saying. Yeah. Which I was like, I d- should I even... It was like three moves ago. Hey, three moves ago, what'd you move? And it was like, mm, no. No. I think I think only when it's like, I have you marked as a... a we- like, I feel, unless it's, it seems to the, there was an illegal move somewhere that you can't really... Yeah. But yeah. the captain's keeping track of his own stuff. Exactly. So he like can't do one. Yeah. Uh, unless, and one time he missed a surface. Yes. Which he was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. It was like, it does because we surfaced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The surfacing can really kind of screw with it a little bit. Well, I know my problem was, is like, how much of this do I erase? Like, you know, obviously I want to try and keep the mines and stuff, but I had a sort of idea where the mine was. And I was like, do I, do I mark some of those things on the actual board while I have this, you know, I have the, uh, that's the what sheet. I would do. Yeah. Well, and I did that for some of it, but it was just, it was just hard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and as the captain, I'm trying to like, do we want to get our radar and sonar up and running as many times as possible before we try and figure out, before we start shooting shit? Yeah. Uh, but the one key thing about the engineer is uh, the things he breaks are the different colors of the things you use. And if he marks off one green on his board, you can't use your radar or your sonar until it's fixed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I never actually saw that, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, like you can't yep. use your weapons if a red is off. Like um, I know there are no. some there are some radioactive marks that were just those like, are kind of free spaces. But if you mark all of them, you take you a damage. take a damage because you've just had a radiation leak. Mm, <laughs> yep. Fun. So no, the game was so much fun. I'm so glad I decided to play. It's tense. It's but it, 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 and you can go as fast as your team can go. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, which makes it even more fun because you're is. working as a team. Yes. But, and that, but that I could see being a problem. Like if you're going to play with a bunch of new people, you need to make sure they're split up pretty equally across the teams. Or if one team, if you notice is dominating, you should mix it up because I could see that being a case where like one team that's played together a bunch and understands each other could fly while the other team is struggling to move. And just if you're, if you're able to go significantly faster than the other team, you can just run circles around and charging up your systems and narrowing down where they are. Yeah. Trying to, confer with your engineer over and over about which direction do we need to go to complete that circuit so it repairs mm-hmm. yeah. uh don't mark any greens because fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah just just a ton of fun it is absolutely going to be a must buy for me uh, as soon as i get a little bit of extra money um but a player count of minimum eight kind of i mean minimum it, two yeah but you don't want to play with anything less than eight i mean so i could see six I could see six because then you can have the uh, the captain and the XO yes. combined. Yeah, and that's or not I that was much. even going to think engineer and XO could probably oh, go similar. Uh, maybe I want to say the rules say the, the captain yeah. takes over the XOs. Oh. Yeah, because it makes because okay. a, a lot of times you're like 
uh, you know, I was listening to you with Adrian or whoever else before you're like, you need to focus on these while I'm yeah. doing these. And yeah. so I can definitely see both of those working at the same time. Mm-hmm. Whereas engineering, you, you need to focus a bit more on in radio. You like the only way I can see you doing a two player game is if it is the turn based. Yeah. God. <laughs> I would not want to do a two player. No, game. a four. M- I don't, I have to see how the rules. Tell I don't, you to I, play I could, four. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine I think a four. six to eight. Yeah. If you have a really experienced team, you could do seven, I guess, where one team has the yeah, guy. Yeah, that's both. fine. I wouldn't want to be a radio operator with anything else. With anything else, yes. yeah. Even the, even hard. the XO. <laughs> I want I want to try the radio operator. You should. It's because that seems my the hardest job. But, yeah. Yeah. Just um, don't be don't be drunk while you're playing that one. <laughs> oh my god. That's why I was just like when you don't were you tell to, me how to live my life <laughs> when you're trying to figure out what what spot for you to be when you first played. We we're like, well, we're we're not going to have you be the radio operator. <laughs> <laughs> Which well, you know, you I, dug I your own know. grave in that. I think one. I, I think I, I, I don't know. I think I maybe could have done it. Well, I don't know. I did captain yeah. well. Aside from being way too fast, yes, I did captain reasonably well mm-hmm. enough. Yeah, didn't make out- any major screw ups. Yeah. Like four 20 ounce beers in. <laughs> like at, any good captain, at good least, <laughs> at least, and de- decently. Who uh, who brought that? Uh, just one. It was wasn't us. Greg, was Greg and his was it Greg or was it his it's brother? Gre- uh, Greg. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you to them for bringing. Yes. That. Yes. And that was super awesome. I really hope they bring it in because yeah. we're at Factotum on Wednesday, and Factotum has that big long table, yeah. which would be pretty much perfect for it. So, so. well, they won't listen to this before then, but no, they might. Yeah, they we released it in the morning on Wednesday. I, I think. Okay. Yeah, we released it Wednesday morning. So yeah. five a.m. Nice. Mountain yes. time. So overall, Jeff. What's your opinion? It's a real, real good game. I, I'm sad that I missed out on seeing it at Gen Con and just finding out. All I heard was the word of mouth, and mm-hmm. I didn't like even go and see their booth at, at the game convention. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I thought it was really, really fun. Yeah, there, um, are, there are a lot of games like that. And there's a lot of there's like scenarios in there that yeah. we didn't even look at. There's a bunch of different maps. Yes. So it can really, there's like ice ones so where you the, can only surface and spurt and Yeah, spots. there's like three spots where you can actually surface up, but that's it. Yeah, it's like three two by two squares. Yeah. And if you oh. surface, you know like, oh, they're in one of these. Which one could they be in? Yeah. Um, so then there's also, there's also. <laughs> <Adrian> just is <laughs> like, like a giddy child at Christmas. God, so there's some play. with less islands. There, there's one that's like three or four islands and, and that's it. mostly open ocean. Yes. I want one with no islands. Ugh. No, no, they, they can be anywhere at any time. <laughs> They're literally anywhere. Just, we're just going to shoot blindly until we might hit them. No, that's when that's when you have to do a good job of using your sonar and your, what's the other locator one? Drones. Drones, sonar yeah, yeah. and drones. And it makes it more of a battle of skill for the EXO rather than the poor. And then they do one navigator. silence in your face. <laughs> yep. But knowing which, which, like, I fucked up once and used the r- abilities in the wrong order. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I asked your, your, like, true, false, X, Y sector before I did the drone. Or no, I did the drone before I did the XY. No, you want to do the dr- uh, uh Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you, you want to do the one. So there's basically the, the one sonar. Yeah. They have to tell you. A true or a false. A true and a false. A, oh yeah, one true statement, one false statement relating and, to their coordinates, either the sector, your X row, or your y, column, or, or your, your sector. sector. Yeah, like we said. Then the yeah. drone is you name a sector, and they tell you truthfully whether they are in or out of that sector. And so you did you, the, that one first, and you, you were like F, and they're like, you know, false. And then for the next thing you asked, they didn't include the F sector no, no, at all. What, no, what they did is that he went like, you're in sector two and he's like, true. And then he went drone and they're like, uh, sector two and then something else. Yeah. So and he just learned lie. absolutely That's nothing right. from yep. the, the sonar. Yep. Yeah. Screw but, yourself. Yeah. What about you, Adrian? Oh man, I loved it. Yeah. I got to play the two positions. They were both a blast. Um, the XO is definitely, I think probably the least stressful because mm-hmm. you don't have to plan directions. You don't have to worry about what to break. You're just, the biggest decision you have to make is what to charge. And if you have a good captain, you can just be like, hey, captain, what do you want? Yeah. What do you want me to get? Do you want me to get you, you know, sonar and drones so that we can find them? Do you want weapons? Mm-hmm. Do you want, 
I guess evasion. I don't know. We, I almost never used whatever the other two are. The silence and is there one more or is it just silence? Uh, that, that, that's for that's There's a, a scenario. There's a scenario one. But we haven't oh. used anything yeah. that has used a scenario. Yeah, so, so we, I think we used silence once. But for the most part, we were just alternating between either weapons to attack or uh, the direction finding stuff to locate. Yeah. And so XO was easy. Captain was kind of hard, uh, especially when your engineer's like, we can't go north. And you're like, well, shit. <laughs> We're going north. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> we are stuck between two islands. We're going north. Yes, we are. Um,. Or usually when that happened, when they're like, oh, yeah, we can't go north. And my only option was north. It's like, all right, we're surfacing. Yep. <laughs> Let's Just clean that board and draw that yeah, diagram you know. real quick. <laughs> that silence can work real good yes. when they're getting close. Because mm -hmm. I remember we both, yeah, you were, I yelled silence. Just the, I got that S out just before you said stop because you were about to fuck me up. Yeah, yep. we had you figured out on that one. And I was like, silence. And he's <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, because then depending on like what the trace you have, you move it around and you're like you realize all of a sudden like they could go in two different directions and it's oh, like, ah yeah. oh, shit. Now I have to like your your sound guy, your radio operator has to like start with two diagrams from either yes. of the positions they could have went yeah. until he figures out which one couldn't work anymore. Uh, yeah. So I really like the game. I just wanna try something else besides the radio. That's fair. <laughs> Especially Doing it three times in a row just gets you just get exhausted. Well, that's good because it sounds like Jeff and I both want to be radio operators. Yeah. So Jeff and I will sh face off as radio operators the next time we play, and you can be an XO or something. Yeah. We just have to make sure we get in on the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before the other dozen people want to play. Yeah, because right? it, it's yeah. gonna it. I could see that becoming a pretty hot game at game night. Mm -hmm. People were people were gathering around watching us play. Like we were all animated and yelling and. And I've noticed like games like that, that that get people real excited tend to draw a crowd at our game nights. They like, do, People yes. come over and they're like, what is going on over here that these guys are having so much fun? Because we're laughing and swearing and mostly just swearing. carrying on. It was, yep. holy shit, it was fantastic. And then, yeah, that's been one of the main games I just want to play over and over and over again. So, big fan. Until we get tired of it. Yeah, pretty much. Like like most games. Like most games. I'm going yep. to play that thing to death. <laughs> yep. And now we're interested in this string over here. <laughs> <laughs> it is a nice string. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that's got a Kickstarter exclusive color. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, guys. That is our review of Captain Sonar. I think it's safe to say all three of us enthusiastically endorse and support this game. That you we should, do. You should go play it, get it. Get friends to play it. Get you friends know, to play yeah. it. Bring it to your own game night that you yes. make because it needs, it really should be played with eight players. Yes, it should. It's definitely yeah. best with eight. So. So now moving on, we've got a little bit of Kickstarter and board game news before we get on to our topic of the day. Jeff, you want to start that off? Yes. Okay. Uh, One Night Ultimate Alien. Yep. So we talked about this a few weeks ago. Uh, I think two weeks ago? Sure. Yeah. I don't know. They all blend together. We need to get our dates together. Once more. again, we need we need a better concept of time. Yeah. <laughs> time handle of it. How it passes. <laughs> uh, it but we talked about it. It uh, made pretty much all the money immediately. was incredibly popular. Yep. It's got eight days left as of recording, which means you'll have just under a week to back it. So we won't talk about it again because it'll be completed before our next episode releases. Yes, mm -hmm. it will. So if you want to get in on it, you can go over to Kickstarter and back it. Yeah. Uh, it looks like they added a Kickstarter exclusive option for the app. It's like basically messing with... The, the like the back end of it a bit. I tried looking up on the Kickstarter what the extra app is for, and it's oh. it's changing. Like I think it's changing types of things in the in the actual app itself, time ripples and stuff like that. Interesting. May, like maybe what types of questions you can ask is the Oracle or something like that. I'm not sure, but it looked weird. Have so. any games like that used an app before? Just uh, the entire series. Yeah, one, one night. night. Okay, I've never played any of the one night ones. Yes, except one night revolution. Okay, that's which yeah. I don't think has any. That's stuff. yeah, that's ten, I mean it, it that follows the same like format format of it, but it's it's a different thing. Gotcha. So that one is more indie boards and cards. Okay. So whereas I, I this one I, is uh, Bezier games. Okay. Speaking of Kickstarters, did you ever get a hold or have you heard back from your support ticket? For no, I, I need Dogs to put of War? <laughs> So two years ago, that is yeah, that's an old. <laughs> <laughs> two years ago, I did good a, luck. Uh, Kickstarter for Dogs of War from Cool Mini or Not. Uh, this was during my Zombicide phase. Uh, and 
as I was moving cross country, I totally forgot about it until Gen Con this year. And I saw it on the shelf and I was like, oh yeah, I kickstarted that. And I just looked it up today. They never gave me a tracking number or a shipping number or anything. I paid them a bunch of money and then that was it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure, I'm sure they'll yeah, figure I mean, something out, get you a copy at least, or something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Did sorry we, we don't or, have that game anymore, but here's a copy of all of our other games. There you go. Yeah, I doubt that'll happen. I know. I mean, even just refunding, <laughs> and right. that was at least $100, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. <sighs> yeah. Noises. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. It stings. Um, it stings. That's what it was. So, yeah. So, um, back to One Night Ultimate Alien. Uh, apparently, it's got some cool app thing that they added as a stretch goal. I hadn't seen that. But it's got less than a week left as of the time this is going into your ear hole. So <laughs> go back it if you want to. It sounds gross. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there is a... Just think mm, of it as a wet willy of information. <laughs> <laughs> gross. Yeah, I know. Yep. Yep. There is a, another new Kickstarter that just recently launched and looks like it's going to be pretty solidly successful. And that is... Thornwatch. Thornwatch. This is from um, Lone Shark Games and Penny Arcade. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's actually made by uh, the same guy that did the Pathfinder adventure card games. Yeah. And And, uh, Apocalyptica or something like whatever that one is called. Now, you said it looked like it kind of vaguely played similar to Pathfinder adventure card games. I mean, in the sense that it looks like it's like a card-driven campaign, so to speak. Um, Yeah. And it's made by him. So I I think it's just a more refined version of it. Just like the game before this one was a more refined version of it as well. Okay. But this has the nice uh, Penny Arcade sheen on it. Yeah. I assume they'll be doing all of the art yes. as well. So you, you, you were telling me this is actually an existing property, right? And it has been for quite some time. Okay. They did a couple different series of ideas. Um, they did one called Automata, uh, which was kind of a noir robot, I am robot sort of thing which was really good i really liked that one and art um they did one that was their D D campaign that they always do at their conventions mm-hmm. that their uh acquisitions something or another uh and then they were kind of doing contests of like interest and stuff like that uh the one that by far got the most interest was thorn watch it's basically boy scouts fighting monsters and it's brutal uh it's like uh what was the they all fight a basilisk and like at least one boy has to die fighting the basilisk. <laughs> and that's like the tradition. Oh, wow. Um, but they broke tradition and all the boys killed the basilisk with the help of their ranger strider guy. And, uh, they all got their basilisk hunting badge, mm-hmm. like their sash of monster hunting and stuff like that. Uh, they have since expanded on that significantly beyond my realm of knowledge, but some people fucking love that stuff. Okay. Uh, they introduced like a Girl Scout version of it, uh, which people really liked. Uh, I think there was a paper pencil version being made at one point or another. Um, and now there is a Pathfinder adventure card game version being created. Yeah. Uh, so one thing that looks pretty cool on this one is that, so when you're building the map, it's a, it's like a bunch of, I wouldn't say interlocking, but it's, it has just all these bunch of image panels. Yeah. And, um, and you know the art looks really good, but all they do the, some good art. Yeah, all the pawns uh, that come with the game, they're gonna lay flat on it, so it sort of looks like a comic panel. Oh, okay. Yeah. The other thing that sounds kind of interesting, you know, I was looking this over, and I'll, I'll be honest, my initial reaction, I I'm hit or miss on Penny Arcade, and the one of the main like pledge levels to really get the game is seventy eight dollars. So expensive. Which seems high to me. Um yeah. I don't see if it's shipping included on this one. Probably not. I don't think so. I think it's yeah, ten so bucks. It, yeah. So it's gonna be, you know, almost a hundred dollars for a card game. Eighty eight dollars, yeah. AKA almost a hundred dollars. I don't know. I feel like once you get to ninety that's almost a hundred. Semantics. It's two dollars <laughs> away from ninety, Zach. <laughs> Semantics. Anyway. anyway, that initially turned me off. You know, and then like I watched their YouTube release or their uh, Kickstarter release video, mm-hmm. which didn't really talk much about the overall gameplay. It was mostly them kind of explaining like how they 
the Penny Arcade guys had this idea and they found a publisher who'd wanted to work with them and stuff like this. And they kept saying things like, oh yeah, this game doesn't really fit any existing genre and it's totally unlike anything else that's out there and yada, 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 yada. And that kind of stuff kind of immediately turns me off. Like, okay, come on. You can tell me more about what your game's like than just saying like, oh, this is unlike anything you've (laughs) ever played because it's probably not going to be like that. However, despite that initial negative reaction that I had, I got looking through the project here and I think that the, that the idea of the judge who kind of presents it to the players as a choose your own adventure kind oh, of yeah, thing. Oh yeah. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Sounds really interesting. So basically the players start off and this is one thing they said in the video that sounds awesome. They didn't want this to be like a, like in Pathfinder, you start off weak and you have to build your deck up as you play, get stronger. And then the thing that I hated about Pathfinder, as soon as you felt strong, it was over. This one, they said you start fully powerful, like you're an awesome hero. And when you get summoned at the start of the game for that story, like you're in the middle of a crisis. Like they, the villagers don't summon you until shit's gone awry. And so uh, depending on how you handle that, then the judge can continue to put out new, like ask you some questions that lead you to a different, you know, adventure or something. So kind of like a choose your own adventure thing. That actually sounds really intriguing to me. It does, yeah. So, and they have a full print and play Mm -hmm. that's just available on the Kickstarter. You don't even need to back. So I might look into having to finally, for the first time ever, do a print and play (laughs) of my own and see what it's like. I've done I've done a couple and they they worked out well. Although it was Spyfall and Two Rooms and a Broom, so not exactly the most (laughs) complex. Yeah. Yes. Um, Um, One thing I do find interesting about how they're running is that all of their stretch goals are based off of the number of backers, not actual money. Hmm. So, because they they call them momentum goals and stuff like uh, that. So, yeah, interesting. But uh, this Kickstarter is currently funded. It is si- significantly funded. It is at four hundred four thousand of its seventy eight thousand goal, and it still has fifteen days to go. Which means we'll probably mention it again next week, just as a reminder, if you want to back it. But you got about two weeks to check it out. Um, Especially if you want that $25 pin add-on. Yeah. So I think it was actually like a player token. It was an upgraded version of that. Okay. Yeah. It, Good. Yeah. Cause it had that felt on the back cause it Penny, would, so it could actually move around. Penny Arcade has like pin things that uh-huh. people fucking go insane over. Especially at their conventions. Like packs and packs of pins. Which, that, which yeah. is also the name like, of the convention. Yeah, yeah I, was about to, I was about to mention <laughs> that. <laughs> packs of packs pins. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Nailed it. So, um, but yeah, so that's Thornwatch. Moving on to board game news. One big, huge, massive, colossal announcement. Yes. Yes. So, uh, if you are not aware, there's this game called League of Legends. It's like, you know, a couple people play it, from what I've heard. Just a few. Yeah. <laughs> not, I don't. Not, not, any, yeah. not anybody at this table? No. Uh, okay. No, I play yeah. Dota like uh, a man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the uh, the people that make this Riot Games, they have come out with a board game. Like self-published. Yes. It is by them. And it is called Mechs versus Minions. And they actually had some people from the board gaming industry. A lot of people from yes. the board gaming industry. Exactly. Uh, come to actually just sort of like they were halfway done with the game. And so they invited some people like they flew them out there to be like, hey, this is our game. What do you think? What are things that you think that we could do better? Uh, like I know they did uh, uh, Tom Vassell from the Dice Tower mm-hmm. and uh, Quinn's yeah, from, Quinn's uh, Shut from Shut Up, Sit Down. Sit Down. Those are the main two they flew out, I think, to consult. Yeah. But then they did a great job of shipping copies to like all the huge names. Seeker Cabal, the Watch uh, Rado, yeah, Watch Rado it Runs, yes. all of them. So they, and, and they just dropped all of that like yes. today. So... In response to Thornwatch's, you know, your immediate reaction of, this seems like a lot of money for this game. When I saw the amount of stuff that came in this game, and they're like, yeah, and it's 75 bucks. I was like, holy shit, that is nice. a ridiculous amount. Because there comes a lot of minis, including four pre-painted, like, nice figures for each of the players, kind including of- one gi- and one giant pre-painted boss one that looks great. They're kind of chibi. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. So that would be my only complaint is I'm not a big fan of the chibi art style. But look at looking over this, that's yeah. my that's really one of my only complaints with yes. the art style is. The so chibis. this game is a, basically it is a co-op campaign driven game with uh, programming elements. Campaign la, based co-op robo rally. Bam. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you're just going around killing all these minions uh, until 
bad guy, you know, the big bad comes out and it looks like with different, uh, as you go through the campaign, you unlock more and more stuff. It and it's, well, I will say like the art design on this stuff is top notch. Not surprising because I mean, <laughs> that's I, what they do. In exactly. The game. Yes. It's all art design. Exactly. Uh, like all of the, the missions are like in these dossier looking things that you like, you fold the paper and it still has that. And it looks like it even has a, a, a clip in the back to, you know, you know how those, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it just all the art looks great on it from what I've seen. Production design. Mm-hmm. It is the insert itself for this game looks better than some components. <laughs> a, a, a lot of, of other games. games. A, yeah, a lot of other games components. It's it's pretty ridiculous. And it all packaged it like it's a pretty giant box. They use the entire space. It's just nice. Yes, it is pretty ridiculous. Look at you, fantasy flight games. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> there, there is no trench here. <laughs> It, one called. thing that's nice is that, uh, like, it has a lot of those plastic inserts that you put for minis mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But it can fit all of them. It can fit because there are like four or five different types at least of the min- minions. Bad guys. Yeah. There's a total of a hundred minions. In yes. This, in there we box. go. There's at least five Ops. different ones, and the 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 insert can fit all of them. Like, no matter which spot you put them in, from what I read, oh. it can fit all of them, but it still holds them well. That's good. Um, and they all have a wash on them too, so they stand out more. And it's just and oh, like there are these metal gear things that are used to tracking things. And it, it's all yours for seventy five dollars. Yes, plus shipping. But yes, okay. <laughs> I will say they only had did it, their initial print run is thirty thousand copies. I said it before when we were discussing. I'll say it again here on air. I think it's going to sell out like hard. I can see it's. I, I don't think it will be sold it, out for it, long, but. Well, no, not just that. I mean, so it also depends on how how much they get from the League of Legends community to do it. Because apparently, according to them, seventy five dollars is highway robbery. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the subreddit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah well, and it's also it's also people that aren't used to board game prices. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was getting enough hype on our board games yes. that I I wouldn't be surprised at all if the thirty thousand yeah. copies are gone. It, so it's gonna it it comes on sale uh, October thirteenth. 13th? Okay, but you have to buy it from that website. Yes, at 11 a.m. Yep. So expect their servers to crash. Yeah. Hype. Hype train go. Choo-choo. Hype train go. I don't Choo-choo, know if I'll be, motherfucker. I don't know if I'll be picking it up. I might. I'm sure there are some people that will. Yeah. Does yeah. it look interesting to you? Yeah, I mean, I didn't I, play a lot of Robo Rally, but I enjoyed it. I would like to play it. I mean, I just found out about like, this today, and I didn't have time to really dig into it before mm-hmm. we started recording, because I come home from work and immediately go into this. But Oh, I do too. too. <laughs> <laughs> I am way less able to watch videos and things at work. Oh well, that's so. true. Yeah, me too. I, not me. I I, I no. <laughs> I work at do. a computer. No, it's not all I do. <laughs> so you count. I go to the bathroom. Okay, anyway. <laughs> at my desk. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, mm. uh, other hype train news. We mentioned last week, and this is actually this is like the third week running that we've talked about Robinson Crusoe. There you go. Yes. <laughs> uh, but we we mentioned last week that they had the new edition coming out and at the time details were a little vague on what's in it well uh on portal games's website portalgames.pl they released this awesome little infographic that pretty much details what's different between the old edition and the new edition and some of it is hilarious mm-hmm. you know like first player token not fancy for the original edition new token Fancy, which is true. It does it look. Does look it's, much uh, looks like a compass. It uh-huh. looks nice. Um, six scenarios or seven scenarios. Character cards, not thick, not cardboard. Now thick and cardboard. But our favorite one, all the way down at the bottom, <laughs> the rule book for the old edition explains nothing, which is completely true. Nope. Yep. <laughs> and for the new edition, explains everything. Everything. Yep. So, so from what I've heard, this is like the game of the year edition that. Was had been in Europe for a while, yeah, and they're finally getting around to printing it in English ah, for us. But so, I really do like that they totally own that. Like the rule book was just garbage for the first one, yes, and some of the things like that. They own it. They're kind of making a joke about it. Like, yep, yeah, we screwed up, but here it is, better than ever. Even the scenario boards look better laid out. They do. To know yes, what those things yeah. are. Um, Zach, you said you heard that there might. Be a, nope. an upgrade kit. I for think those there might be an upgrade. Edition. So, like the new upgraded components. So instead of the cubes, the plastic cubes and the wooden cubes, you know, food will look more like food, and uh, the the plastic cubes will be discs now. 
uh, and and it just looks like a little a graphical overhaul for a lot of their tokens and stuff like that. Yeah, so makes me want to spend another eighty dollars on. I'm sure game. the I'm sure it'll be for the low low price of seventy nine ninety five. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All so. right. Oh, I was worried. <laughs> I, I knew you were. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, so that's about it for news. Yeah, between those two things there, and I think we're ready to move on to our discussion of the day, which following on the heels of last week's discussion about how to start a game night. We decided that we would also take a little bit of time tonight to talk about what we think kind of makes a good game night game. You know, the kind of games that we bring to our game night and other game nights that we attend and just, you know, what we look for in those and some of some examples of the ones that we have in our bags. So, Sounds good. Zach, you have your bag here. Would you like to start? I do. Um, so, mo- uh, all right. So most of the time when I am filling up my bag for game night games, uh, I'm going to pick, you know, games that I know the ins and out of. Uh, so that way, because most of the time at game night, whenever I play a game, I'm going to be teaching somebody. At least one person pr- has probably never played. Yeah, like we talked about, we get a fairly steady stream of new players in. So it's good to be able to have games that you know thoroughly enough to comfortably teach them. Um that's definitely one of the things that I know I look for. It, like pretty much all the games in my back, I would feel comfortable teaching to an entire table full of new players. And destroying them at it. Well, no, I, I mean, do, you'd like I, to, but you know. No, I, you I don't have to. I don't but. let new players win, but I certainly don't. I don't go ruthless on them like I do with you guys or more experienced players where I actually really try to win. Um, what other things do you look for when you, when you pick games, Zach? Um, one that can play a decent amount of players or at least some sort of so i have like some that just played a four i have some that play the eight and i have a couple that played a 12 just i want to have a, a wide girth a <laughs> solid <laughs> use of words <laughs> i want a girth of games <laughs> yes of uh for just so i know that i can have a good game to play no matter how many people are there right okay yeah did you get a thesaurus for that word oh yes <laughs> okay <laughs> um but in usually for pretty much all of them except for one play within an hour i would say okay and so like because you know this is our game night uh for the most part we're gonna be playing a lot of different games and usually it's not as good it's not that great to just get in a three hour long game when that's gonna be most of your night right um what and, are some of your favorite games that you have in your bag so stockpile is that I played that last week and hopefully I'll try and play it again this week. Okay. Uh, this, like I said, it's one of my favorite games right now and I, it is, it is really easy to teach people. They get it pretty quickly. Uh, every time people play, they have a blast from, I've never, I've, I've played it four or five times on every single time. And it's been like a decent amount of new people and they're like, Oh, it was a great game. I enjoyed it. And, uh, there's still expansions that are like, ex- uh, expansion components in here that I haven't played with. Okay. So, if I want to get deeper into the game, they're there if I want to. But it, just with the, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, the forecast dice and just the player, the player powers, like just adding those makes it great to play with new people. Okay. So, uh, and then I also got Love Letter. You know, m- not surprisingly, a lot of my favorite yeah. games are in yeah, my bag from, from your list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Love Letter is a you know it's a great shorter game, like I was saying. Uh, and then for the longer game, I have the networks, which we've been trying to play. Yes, I definitely Fantastic want to play game. that again. Yes. It's a really good game. Uh, and then I got just you know, and I just got some more social ones like Code Names and Spyfall. And then I got some, I got some uh, cooperative and some competitive, uh, competitive, some two player games. And so yeah, right on. Yeah, uh, Jeff, what about you? What do you like? You do you have something in particular you look for when you grab some games to have? Uh, uh, easy to teach new people, like brand new for sure. Um, easy to learn. Is usually what I go for. I bring a couple heavier games, uh, but I almost always have Skull, Coup, The Grizzled, and then I sort of and some decks of cards. Yeah, I, uh, I, I always appreciate it. when you have those decks of cards. Yes. <laughs> so many games I want to play, and I'm like, I really should get a deck of cards, and I yeah. have yet to get one. <laughs> I, I currently have three decks of cards in there. Nice. That's a good number. Uh, Four is also pretty solid. Depending, there's a couple games I play that use four decks of cards. They're I really do want to play Hand and Foot long. again. Yeah. Uh, I've got Tiny Epic uh, Kingdoms, Tiny Epic Kingdoms, yeah, Kingdoms, the, yeah. Uh, and then and, and Tiny Epic Galaxies. Uh, Kingdoms I'd find easier to teach newer people. Interesting. Um, 
galaxies, you know, there's a little bit of, to the dice mechanics. And yes. If you're on the planet or in orbit of the planet, what you can do, what you can't do. The, the follow mechanic, or the follow mechanism can really throw some people off, so yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. I've never played Kingdoms. I've only played Galaxies, but I didn't have any problem with Galaxies. Yeah. I thought it all yeah. pretty much made sense, but I'm a fairly experienced a seasoned gamer. gamer. Yeah. I've crammed a lot of gaming into the last few years. Yeah. Um, I definitely appreciate that you're one of the people who actually has a real copy of Skull because you can play with a deck of cards, but I really like playing with the big colorful tiles. It is I think funny. it adds a lot it to it. It is funny how many people get thrown off when you play with cards. Yeah, they get wrapped they're up They're like, the okay, numbers. well, I got this black 10, but I also have this black 8. Which one? It doesn't matter. It's only the colors, but, yeah. but this number's bigger. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't matter. Yep. Um, and then the Grizzled is easily one of my favorite little cooperative yep punishingly hard cooperative games that Same. plays pretty quick i've only played it with the expansion once but i like it a lot more than the base game okay nice. i still haven't played with the i expansion, haven't either so yeah we've moved on to other games we have but i bring it every week i well, <laughs> there's a lot of games that i bring every week that i don't get to play so. yep same here I just, so. have to, I just have to set it out on table, an empty table in front of me and see who sits down yeah. first. <laughs> so it sounds like we all three kind of look for the same things in games, that easy to teach, really accessible, um, especially I think because we tend to be three of the people who are really involved in getting new people to the table when they come to game night. Um, you know, I mentioned last week discussing the game night that I kind of miss some of the heavier games. Mm-hmm. I try to keep a couple. Like right now, the two heaviest games I probably have in my game bag would be Mystic Veil. Vale. And Isle of Sky, which aren't nope. either one particularly no, they heavy, um, but they they come close enough to scratching that like real game itch where I actually have to put a little bit of thought into it. Versus like I I have in my game bag because I just have room for it, you know, like Bananagrams, and I just I fly through Bananagrams. Like it doesn't take a lot of thought for me to just make up words. Well, not make up words, but <laughs> come Cheat. up. Cheat. your where's <laughs> usual? Ooh, this is a great word. Come up with words. <laughs> Um, you know, or like I keep a copy of flux in there and like flux is the ultimate like zombie flux. So right? zombie flux. Yeah. It's like the ultimate little just sit around and play a game that has no real rules or anything. It's just ridiculous. Um, but I am, I have a huge bag, so I, I take a lot of games. I did shrink my bag a little bit. I, I've noticed that you're not carrying your big duffel bag anymore. It, it, it was really annoying, especially with some of the heavier games. I, I, I might start bringing that again. But for right now, these like these are the games I'm more interested in playing. That's fair. Uh, also, like there's some games that I ended up bringing that I had no interest in playing. Like I used to bring uh, Betrayal, uh-huh. and I know a lot of people liked playing it, but I never wanted to play. <laughs> I never wanted to play it. Yeah, after it fell off your list. Yes. Well, and not just yeah, yeah, and um, um, yeah. That's one that I'll occasionally like. I usually have two or three games that I'll rotate. Also, because I don't have enough room for all of the bigger boxed games, like not necessarily heavier, but just bigger boxes. Yeah. So like Betrayal is one that I'll rotate in or out. Uh, like Sheriff of Nottingham is another one that like that. Like I like bringing mm-hmm. it because it's a really accessible game and it's a lot of fun, especially at a game night when people are drinking. You can kind of role play with it, laugh, you know, get into the whole trying to smuggle past the sheriff. Yes. Um, but sometimes I just don't really feel like playing it. So I just leave it. So uh, I will say this is not. You know, this is not on topic or anything like that, but just in the sense for bringing game night games and stuff like that and the smaller ones. So I saw on the Dice Tower, Tom Vassell had this, like he went to a container store or something like that. And he had Uh like this box that had, you know, 10 different smaller boxes in it that are, you know, plastic boxes and stuff that would be like, you know, it would have Manhattan Project Chain Reaction and iDark Overlord and Epic, you know, Tiny Epic Galaxies in a lot smaller containers and stuff like that. Just so you could bring like 12 you know, smaller games and it's like the size of stockpile or a little bit taller and stuff like that. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That, sounds like, that sounds like something to be right up my alley. It does. I am just nuts about overly condensing my games. Yes, you are. I need to get nuts about it because I have too many games. Yeah. <laughs> it's really great for games like, you know, two of the ones that I am the most proud of my condensing job on are Splendor and Machi Koro. Um, because those boxes for both of them are ridiculously oversized for what's in them. And those are two games that I take every week because yes. I got them into small enough boxes. It's not a big deal to just throw them you in You still there. need to mark. I think you should start mark. Do you have like a label on them at all? For no. real? Yeah. <laughs> you should just cut the name off the lid of the old box. And that's and what I thought about doing. It. But then just, I got to destroy the old box. And mm, Your first a, step is caring about the old box. Yeah, yes. and that's the problem. There's, you I, just print it at work. On your computer. Now there, I, that I could, that's something I could more look into actually doing. Yes. Um, you know, I could even like shrink the artwork down to where it fit appropriately on the smaller box or something. Find a good thumbnail. Now you're cooking with gas. <laughs> but 
That is entirely off topic. It Not is. really. Size size of board games is very important. Like, it I, I want to drag around Mysterium to all yeah. these, but it's a big box. And so I I used to bring uh, Legendary Encounters, the Alien That's one, a, and so heavy. Well, especially when I put the Predator game in that as well. It has over thirteen hundred cards in it and two play mats and sleeved and sl- yeah, they're all <laughs> yeah, sleeved. But, you know, and this is where I understand why you put Predator in there, but. You should almost, you know, take it back out because people played it. Like when you brought it, like it got played. I know. It, and it's a pretty accessible one too. Like since it's co-op, like a fully co-op deck builder, uh-huh. like it's easy to bring new people along and, you know, get them involved without having them feel like they're just getting stomped at something they don't understand. So I'm pretty sure. So what I did is I took the bottom from the Predator box. No, I took the bottom from the Alien box. And the top from the Predator. And put them together. I'm pretty sure I threw away those other ones. So... And throw away that trash. Yeah. Don't keep that old stuff. Yeah. Adrian. I have every box for every game I've ever purchased. <laughs> ever? Yeah. Ever. At, at least of all the ones I still own. Oh, if, okay. if I don't have the box, then it's because I sold the entire game. <laughs> like I don't have I don't have Netrunner core box anymore uh, because I, I sold yeah, exactly. It. I just want to make sure. Yeah. So it would don't be great it. if you're just like I only sell games if they don't. I oh I want to keep those boxes forever. Just as a memory. You just keep it in that closet of yours. Just go in there, you're just petting them. Oh, these boxes. And it got weird. I, I have even weirder. It's like, and all the corpses of your dead pets or. <laughs> God damn, this episode's been just ew. <laughs> I only talked about petting a box, okay? It's not that weird. Well, he wants to pet, he wants <laughs> to pet his old pets. Well, this time, you, you were also the one who was talking about the girthiness factor of something earlier. And... The word fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So, um,. So we intend to dig deeper. Most of us, I think, Zach, what are you sitting at? Like 10 or 12 games? In I game have bag? 12 games. 12 right games. Now. I think I'm easily in that area. Jeff, do you know about how many you've got? Yeah, probably less than that. Yeah. So I think my duffel bag, I would have 20 plus games. Yeah. So. so I think for some Seven future episode, we'll really dig into each one of our game night game bags for like another list episode we'll dig into them really kind of break down what we have in there and why uh so you guys can judge us for what games we take to game i would would assume why is because we like them that's what i would guess caverna is not making it to game nights it's so sad most of the time yes i definitely don't play coup or bananagrams very regularly and i i bring them like a lot like there's games in there that i bring specifically because they're accessible not necessarily because i like them okay so you're wrong, Zach, is what I'm getting at. I just felt like saying something that you'd be able to say that. I, just, I wanted you to make you feel better about yourself after all the weirdness that me and Jeff just caused, apparently. Patronizing asshole of yeah. a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, Nailed it. Yep. So that's a <laughs> Got real, me to a T. <laughs> real, real quick little rundown of the games that we throw into our game night bags and why we do it. So Only um, Twilight Imperium in that game night bag. Yeah. Mm, I just yeah. emptied the box into the bag. <laughs> Cards and all. <laughs> Oof. I don't think that would even delay setup time that much. No, it would not. <laughs> I have it all in nice plano boxes. Everything separated. It's very nice. Uh, our friend has just, is it, like, um, it feels like a million uh, plastic bags. <laughs> yeah, it it works. Bags. It works, but it's definitely just like, you just all these bags. Yep. That'll happen. We yep. need to play that again sometime soon. Yeah. But. I feel like that's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> No, we we're way well, over, we're way overdue. We're way overdue on a lot of games. So, once uh, again, we need to stop having lives, just board games and podcasts. That's all we got to focus on. Well, until we start getting paid for this, who needs money besides to buy more board games? <laughs> right. And, and so, <laughs> so who needs it? So just send us all of yours. <laughs> yep, that's it. God. You have nailed you pandering <laughs> asshole, <laughs> and you have nailed me to a yes, tee. Yeah. So. Um, and then Jeff is just aloof. He, yeah. Earlier when we were talking about uh, the the uh, plan of the episode, he was just watching Picard or eat ice <laughs> Patrick Stewart eat some Patrick ice cream. Patrick Stewart eating ice cream. It's like, what are you doing? It's like, well, I, don't know, I was there. And I'm watching it now. I like how often in off episode things where we're discussing like what we'll talk about or like directions for the show, you and I will have opposite opinions. We'll be like, hey, Jeff, what do you think? And we'll look over and he's just like watching was some YouTube attention. video or something. <laughs> like, uh, just letting you two talk it out. You're yep. the tiebreaker, man. Yep. I tie. I break ties. That's, uh, yeah, he's the tiebreaker. I break ties the- well. <laughs> and I go with the one that's better. <laughs> 
So I'm not even sure I can find the tracks that this train used to be on. And that's this fine. Point. It's all good. So we're gonna I started run. writing notes about just off rails, <laughs> Twilight Imperium, off rails, <laughs> decision making. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Sounds like a good <laughs> idea. Thanks wrap for, it up. Thanks for tuning into this episode where we got right back to our, after, after two episodes of fairly well structured awesomeness we are back to being completely See, that's why you guys rails. need to send us emails so we can focus yeah, on no, something no emails this week no emails we got a reply from our colorado springs yeah friend, so that's about it but thanking us for yep talking about his email so if you want your emails read on the show or if you don't you just want to send us them send us emails at emails at milehighgameguys.com we would love feedback. If there's things you don't like on the show, you know, if you think that we're way too off the rails and you would like us to tighten up, feel free to give us Im- some constructive feedback. Impossible. <laughs> I can't make any promises, but we can always try. Or if there's something you would like to hear us discuss, if you have a topic that you think, you know, we have an interesting opinion on or something, feel free yeah. to shoot us an email. If you want to hear another list, let us know. Yeah, if you've got a list, you know, what are our top 10 games to play when we're shit housed? Are there 10 I could play? (laughs) (laughs) Can I just name the same game like 10 times? (laughs) Nonsense. Um, You can also send suggestions along those lines, or if you just want to interact with us, we are all all three fairly active on Twitter. Zach and I kind of split duty on the at MH game guys, Twitter handle. Jeff, you've got your own Jeff underscore M H G G. We all three post photos on Instagram at my high game guys, where our nightmare faces will greet you yes mostly just the games we play yeah yeah i try to keep my face out of my photos well i i try and keep your, your face in my photos captain so. sonar's on there in case you want to see what yes. actually captain sonar looks like yes yes i didn't get a picture of us actually playing the game because i was too busy playing the game it's a fucking <laughs> awesome game it was yeah. it was a great game um you can also go to our facebook page go to our facebook page like it chat on it post things please <laughs> Feel free, Please. feel free to, if you enjoy this podcast, and I'm hoping that if you're listening this far in that you like our podcast, go on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever podcast service you use. Give us some ratings. You know, we like ratings. We like to know that we're doing good, and it helps us get in other people's ears, which is our ultimate goal, to be in as many ears as possible. Like that wet willy. Like that, that wet willy. <laughs> that's a callback. That's, that's a callback is what that is. Yep. Uh, and then finally... One last time, so Zach can roll his eyes real big. I do put up uh, links and things in our show notes, and you can see our show notes on our website, milehighgameguys.com. So check it out. Thanks for listening, and tune in next time. Until then, I've been Adrian. I'm still Zach. I continue to be a Jeff. And we'll catch you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.